Welcome back to The Comments Show. I'm your host, Kieran, and I'm reasonably weird, as the doctors have told me. <laughs> Irish lad said on Sunday Vibes, Rashford being linked 250K a week, absolute joke. Now that might be a joke, but it pales in comparison to what I'm about to show you right now. Juventus target Burnley starlet Dwight McNeil after his impressive displays for England under 20s. Juve want Burnley's Dwight McNeil. I'm astonished that anyone is genuinely called Dwight. Like imagine giving birth and being like, looks like a baby Dwight. Apparently after his breakthrough, I can't say through, yeah, Louis Farou, breakthrough season for Burnley where he scored three goals and provided five assists in 21 games, not actually that bad for a double Burnley side. If you think about it, it probably only seems weird to us because the fourth or so in English called Dwight McNeil, just want to highlight that again, Dwight, moving from Burnley to playing for bloody Juve just sounds a bit silly. But if it was some random bloke called, I don't know, Raul Escargo with the exact same stats, then you'd be like, eh, strange decision, but I don't know. He's apparently got good feet and he's proper quick. However, where this transfer does get extremely absurd is when the reported fee Burnley have told Juve is 30 million pounds. 30 bloody million pounds. What has happened to football? Imagine if that happened. 30 million from Burnley to Juve for Dwight McNeil. Just try and comprehend that transfer. The thing is, you can actually start to justify Burnley asking for 30 million because you think he is objectively not worth 30 million. But then all of a sudden you think about the fact that McNeil is only 19 and contributed eight goals in 21 games in a Burnley side that only averaged 9.5 shots per game last year. The worst in the division. A Burnley side who only averaged 3.1 of those shots on target per game. A stat only beaten by Brighton. And they were also the side that attempted the least amount of dribbles with just 5.4 per game. If you're Burnley, you're hoping that he can push on next season and get even better. He arguably, in hindsight, kept them up last year. Burnley received £107 million for staying in the Premier League and finishing 15th. If, in their view, they think McNeil is integral to keeping that status, then really they don't have a reason to sell under £30 million. So £30 million actually makes sense from Burnley's side. The other side of this is why, why do Juve want him? Guess who plays on the left wing for Juve? He's six foot two and grew his child from a Petri dish in a lab. It's Ronaldo. McNeil as an understudy for Cristiano Ronaldo? It seems likely, very likely. I actually want this to happen. After I said all this, I actually quite like this to happen because that would be incredibly, incredibly funny. Samuel Keel said on Continental Club, my mum says you lot need a desk so we don't have to see your legs. All of our legs are not only both thick with two C's, maybe even three C's, and enticing. I bet you a tenner they're better than your mum's legs. So maybe she should get a desk herself, so I'd have to see hers. That was awfully rude, Sam Kill's mother. And I hope you, Sam Kill, show your mums this. Show your mums? You might have more than one mum, I don't know. Look at these legs, Sam Kill's mum. Look at them. Me and James go to the gym and we got a rowing machine. Huge these are, and them. James has bruises on his knees from doing the worm at the weekend. So, we're also very cool. Andre Biedach. I have a thing for barking at the moment. Kieran's a furry, confirmed. I am no furry, you're a furry. But actually, on the topic of furries, I do actually know someone who is, you know, technically a furry. Our transfer correspondent this week, Mr. Nick Pigeon. Hi Kieran, I've been flying over Europe and I saw Coutinho at his Barcelona training ground crying. He says he wants to move back to Liverpool. Also, there are unconfirmed reports that he straightens his hair every morning. But, I mean, that is just hearsay at the moment. But I'll give you concrete news once I find out about it. What I'll do, I'll sh** on him. I'll do a little, little dookie from above. He'll have to go wash his hair and then we'll find out. So, back to you, back to you in the studio, Kieran. Cheers, Nick. If you want to follow Nick Pigeon on socials, then just go to your nearest public fountain. Sean Horwitz. Why don't Europeans pronounce the E in Nike? Hi, Sean. You're right. What do you call this? Yeah, I thought so. What about this? 
high key. Are you, are you going for a high key? No, you're not. You're going for a hike. You're riding your bike. Fez El Khayti, this is dumb. Liverpool is the best club in the world. Why would he leave? This man is talking about Mo Salah from our lovely conversation last week. I just want to say, if you really think your club is the best club in the world, then you're wrong. And I'm not specifically talking about Liverpool here. Everyone thinks that their club is the best club in the world. Maybe not Blackpool fans or Bolton. But... And that's okay. But to think a player wouldn't leave because, oh, my club's the best club in the world is absolute rubbish. Man City are the best club in the world to me because I'm a football fan and also an idiot. They go hand in hand. There's not a great deal of logic in football. Football itself is an emotional sport and that's why it's so popular. But remove emotion from it and any player could leave any club at any time. Most of them aren't thinking, oh, I'm at the best club in the bloody world. Most of them want to be the best player in the world. They want to earn money and they want to win everything they can. And also on top of money, they want to earn as much as humanly possible so their grandchildren's grandchildren never have to work a day in their lives or at least, you know, can eat. And when you think about that, you're like, nah, yeah, quite reasonable. I will move to PSG. The real only legitimate claim to being the best club in the world is pro clubs on FIFA. And more specifically, FDFC. Go and subscribe to the newly renamed Squad Goals and watch eight of us play FIFA pro clubs. It is so, so unbelievably good. You have my word. Connor Edward, wow, hats off for that at Atlanta segment intro. It's incredibly satisfying, I'm very proud of it, but I'm slightly annoyed that no one has realized the Easter egg in one of the shots, which isn't Bergamo in Italy, but actually of Atlanta, Georgia in the US of A. Notizi Atalanta. Atalanta have not signed anyone new since our last check last week, but upon using some extensive research methods that I only learned at Football Daily, João Pedro may be moving to Bergamo. The 27-year-old Cagliari attacking midfielder put up decent numbers for a very, very poor Cagliari side, who finished 15th last year. He contributed to 10 goals in the league. That splits into seven goals and three assists. That's nearly a third of his team's goals for the entire season. Now, Gasparini does seem to switch his formations a fair bit. He switched between a 3-4-3 and a 3-4-2-1 and a 3-4-1-2. However, he played a 3-4-1-2 five times in their 12-game unbeaten run that took them to the Champions League qualification spots, which is a formation most suited to our friend Pedro here, who may be joining, as he's been most fruitful in that position during his career, scoring 32 and assisting 15 in 86 games from attacking midfield. Club captain Papu Gomez has been playing in that position, however, in those 3 4 one twos. Are you really going to replace him after he got seven goals and 11 assists and led them to a Champions League qualification? Probably not, but he is 31. And the other option is, you know, they play Ilicic, who is also 31. People are old. Time is a bastard. This seems like a particularly frugal and clever purchase for Atalanta if it does go through. And at 27, Pedro has a fair few years on them. So if all goes well, you could get four strong seasons out of him once the other two move on eventually. I feel a bit sick, just want to let you know. I attempted to do some research and it felt slightly satisfying by the end of it. I'm never going to bloody do that again. Ancient Mew. Right, the first meme there, it's a, it's a small video and there's no music on it, so I'm just going to find some music and put it over the top so it works. Here you go. Nick Pigeon's comment show on fire and then just me on holiday, just... I mean, it's technically holiday, but it just meant I wasn't at work, so didn't actually fly anywhere. Wasn't that interesting, just sat in my room. Um, on to the next meme. Good meme, by the way. Who was it? Room Cobra. You're right, friend. Good meme. Well done. The second meme of the week is just a cute and young lispy boy. It's a very young me. I say a very young me. It was first year of uni. How old was I then? maybe 19. The gap in the beard was just too much then, so I didn't try and grow one, couldn't really grow one anyway. And I look very shiny. 
because I'm sweaty and I think I'm in Pizza Express with my mother. I think that was the first time I'd seen my mum since I'd gone to uni. So, it was really hot. Comment of the week of week. The comment, there's no comment of the week this week because I have a question for you to answer. I want you to comment down below. Okay, so get your typing fingers ready to comment. After Yao Felix's rumoured move to Atletico Madrid to be in the region of over 100 million euros, I want you all to guess who the next over 100 million euros transfer will be after him. I will put what I consider the best answer next week as the comment of the week. Although, I'm off again next week. <laughs> so it might be James. If not, it'll be the week after. I've been Kieran, I've got more holidays than Patrick Van Straten, and I'm off once again. Bye!